are listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to Change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before your throne, washed in the blood of Jesus. I thank you for giving me the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. Make me a quick understanding so I do not judge by what I see with my eyes or hear with my ears, but by what your Holy Spirit reveals to me. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence and ask you to be Lord over this ministry and all that is done here. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to anoint this time of prayer and ministry. We claim the blood of Jesus over this session for our protection. We proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord here and that this is holy ground. We take authority in the name of Jesus and the power of his blood and word and command all evil spirits to leave this property now. We claim this room sealed in the name and authority of Jesus. We bind and forbid any evil spirits on the outside from having any knowledge or influence in this room. We thank you that the battle is the Lord's, but the victory is ours. We thank you that you have the right to adjust, to shift, to change, to move, to do whatever is necessary to bring forth your glory, your power, your might, your dominion, your increase, your peace, your victory, your abundance in every area of our, of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And all in agreement say, amen. amen. Starting a new series called, Who Has Your Permission Slip? Who has your permission slip? Sharon, who got your permission slip? Jazz, who got your permission slip? Wayne, who got your permission slip? Chris, who got your permission slip? Who should have your permission slip? We should. But I'm going to talk about it. Because see what happens. This, this is what normally happens. I'm getting revelation one way or another, either through counseling or ministry. One way or another, I'm going to get revelation because God has always given me stuff. And what I found out is that sometimes in ministry or sometimes in counseling, people just need somebody to give them permission to grow, to flourish, to increase, to laugh, to cry, to run. Yeah, I ain't say run away, run too. See, it's a big difference. We've been running away all our life. Time for us to run to the situation. Confront it. Kill it. I ain't talking about people. But I am talking about the spirit behind people. So, the definition of permission is to authorize. That means someone gives permission for it to be done. Permission. Authorize. I give you authorization to go do this. I give you the authority to go do this. Formal consent. Sometimes you got to show paper. Y'all know what I'm saying? You get ready to get on a plane, you're going, going over, overseas somewhere, you got to show a what? Passport. You didn't just get that out of the alley, hopefully. <laughs> you had to pay for that, okay? Because otherwise, there's certain symbols on it that they know, no, this is a fake one right here. They say security. They call it for a V. They call it for. Green light. When you get permission, you don't stop at a, you go. You determine how fast you want to go. But that's the green light. So everything is a go. Everything has been set up. Everything has been planned, Lord, for you to graduate in the, in the next year or so. Everything has been set up. Clearance. The thing about permission is it creates a clearance for nothing to be in the way. Everything gets moved out of the way. As we're renovating the church, after service is over, the guys come in and they'll move all the chairs out of the way. So when we have to work, we don't have to be concerned about tripping over something. So when you give permission, you're giving clearance, making it easy for you to excel. But check this one out. I, I just love definition. All right, so this is what, y'all check this out. Y'all going to have a quiz. 
Will you ready for the quiz? I, the right or ability to do something that is given by someone who has the power to decide if it will be allowed or permitted. Y'all got it? Y'all ready? Let, 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 y'all want to read it together? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. The right or ability to do something that is given by someone who has the power to decide if it will be allowed or permitted. The quiz is this. Jesus already gave us the authority. He was the someone who gave, gave us the authority. But now he's asking us, what are we permitting? What are we allowing? Are we sick because we allow sickness to be permitted? Now, if you're overcoming something, ain't, 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 I'm, I'm not trying to point no fingers. I'm just going to go where I go. But you, me, the right or ability to do something that is given by someone who has the power to decide. Touch yourself. That's me. Y'all can say it out loud. That's me. I'm the one that's giving the authority. Remember the scripture say, whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So who has the authority? We do. If we're excited about life, guess who gave that authority? Guess who allowed us to? That's us. Write this down. Focus on what you have. That sounds so easy. But we want to focus on what's missing. You, 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 somebody gave you a, a thousand dollars. You want a thousand and two. You're going to focus on what? What they gonna focus on, Nicole? The two. Well, you ought to be able to find two dollars worth of change. Put it with it if that's what you did. But I said a thousand, and you looking at two. Faith, what's wrong with that? Are y'all ready? I'm ready. So, so okay, let's talk about. I, I wanna, you know, always when I teach on something, I always try to find it in the scripture. Because if I find it in the scripture, I know I'm teaching right. So it's like, okay. Jesus just finished feeding, they say, a minimum of 5,000. That was men. That didn't include women and children. So there was a lot of folk out there. And, and so he, he's doing that, and he said, it's time for me to get along with my father. Because y'all, how many of y'all know ministry can drain you? Y'all can be spiritual. No, it, it, it excites me. It excites me now. But when I say amen, okay? Curly, no, I go home and sleep for like three, four hours after ministry. So Jesus did the ministry. So he said, I need to be alone. I need to talk to my father. He said, y'all go ahead and take the boat and just go on across. And I'll meet y'all there. So everything going on, they, they get in the boat. You know, they talking about, well, you know, I got an extra piece of chicken left. You know, and this guy saying, well, I had five loaves and left. And, and they talking among themselves. Then the wind come up. But, but they look out and they see Jesus walking on the water. And he's walking across the water. The storm is coming. But he didn't look down and pay any attention to the storm. Because, see, he gave the storm permission that it could come up. But then he goes on to say, so, so he's walking. And then all of a sudden in Matthew chapter 14, verse 28, in the message it says, Peter's suddenly bold. So they're they trying to figure out who is this walking on the water. Jesus said, don't be afraid. Take courage. It's me. He figured they should know who he is. But anyway, <laughs> so Peter, Peter suddenly bold said, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water. What did Jesus say? He said, come. Come on ahead. What did Jesus just do? Gave him permission. But who asked for permission? So if we ask for permission and it's already granted, why are we still standing still? Are, are we waiting on something else to come? So that's my question for us this week is he said come and I'm still standing in the same place. I asked for permission, he granted it, and then I'm still standing in the same place. So he steps out. The other dudes, what they do? They, they look. They, they, uh, you, you know how people are. Porter, you know how people are. Now, you know they weren't just looking. And what do you think they were looking for? To see whether Peter was going to sink. I'm, I'm talking about the first step. We ain't talking about how he walked over. They, they were looking. They, they said, okay, uh, 
How much you want to bet? How much you want to bet? He's going down. He's going down. Peter stepped out, and then he said, oh, it's pretty cool. He stepped out again. But see, he kept looking at Jesus instead of looking at the symptoms, instead of the water. What are you looking at? See, when I say you, I'm talking about myself. See, I include, see, I got to study this stuff before I can teach it to you. And so he, he, as long as he's looking at Jesus, the permission has been granted. When he looks down at how deep the water is getting, then he took his eyes off the permission and focused on, no, did, did he really tell me I could come? Did he really tell me I have the ability? Did he really tell me I could walk on water? And then he began to sink. He thought the permission got taken back. Jesus gave the permission and he didn't take it back. The situation looked at him and then Peter said, the heck with this, how in the world is a man walking on water? Now, it's okay for Jesus to do that, but you telling me I can do that? Let me tell you how powerful this thing. Even Jesus asked for permission. Uh-oh. Yeah, don't, don't y'all cuss at me. Even Jesus asked for permission. Where did I find? I found it in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Check this out. That's Jesus right here at the door. He said, look, I stand at the door and I knock. Now, Jesus can go anywhere he want to go because he created everything. But Jesus is knocking on the door. He said, if you hear my voice, open the door. But I didn't see anywhere where he's banging on the door. He just knocked on the door. And he said, I'll come in and we will share a meal together as friends. I'm not going to lecture you about you, the fact you're supposed to be saved. I'm going to come in you and talk with you as if I'm your friend. But see, this is what's so powerful about Jesus in this scripture. Now, Jesus is so powerful that he did, he gave himself permission to come down as man instead of as God. Now, that means when he gave himself permission, then that means all the authority had to back off because he gave it permission. So he's doing as king what we should be doing as servants. Then he changes us from servants to, look, to, to gave us friendship. You follow what I'm saying? So the king should be knocking on the door to get you straight. You should be knocking on the king's door so he can get you straight. But Jesus has so much humility because he knew his job was to be a servant. So he says, I'll tell you what, since Paul's not going to knock on my door, I'm going to go to Paul and knock on his. See, that thing powerful. He gave himself permission to knock on the door, to knock on the door of my heart, to knock on the door of your heart. But he asked, can, can I come in? But if you said no, he said, cool. There's a lot more doors to knock on. But I might not come back this way again. Even Jesus asked for permission. He said, I'll I, I come in if you invite me. So, just want to let you guys know, we were programmed towards permission. Am I lying on anybody? So as children, we were programmed to seek out authority, especially our parents. If we don't see our parents, we're supposed to look for authority. Now, I know when I was growing up, y'all raise your hand, y'all people around that age bracket. Now, we know. Now, if y'all raise your hand, I know. Y'all, let me tell you this scenario. It, when I was growing up, any person that was an authority figure had the right to correct us. How many of y'all grew up in that, that arena? Okay, all right, I'm looking around, looking around. The new arena is nobody, include the police, but not say nothing to your children. Am I lying on anybody? Because, see, in our time when we were coming up, what would happen is you get in trouble, whoever saw you could spank you. Am I lying on anybody that been in that arena? Okay, thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. But now, if you just say something to somebody, child, gun is a blaze. Yes, sir. So people see stuff and they won't say nothing because the time is different. But we asked for authority. We 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 looked out authority. Can I have a snack? You in your you, you in your parents' house, and you asked the way and say that's right. Now, now you see that cookie. 
You see it. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't grab that cookie. Now, we had certain special people in the family that would steal cookies. But it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Now, your man said, y'all looked at me. See, I saw, I saw how y'all looked at me. Top, you looked at me. See, Bernetta, you automatically assume it was me. It was Matlin. Matlin, where are you? No, I ain't joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking on my sister. Just joking on my sister. Okay. No, Matlin didn't. She wasn't in the cookies. She was in the money. But anyway. That, Dale, you know what, you know what, Dale, you know what, right here, right here, no, I'm just joking. Can I have fun in church? Can I give myself permission to laugh in church? Okay, Madeline, we straight, we straight, just, just forgive me, all right? So can I have that snack? You know, we, we, we helped out uh, two children during the uh, corona, and they, they was over at our house and stuff like that, and it was so cool, because like I said before, these children know how to tell time, and so they know they get, a, they eat, get lunch at 12, for, and then they get a snack at 2, and then they get one before they leave. So they watching the clock. Probably looking at the lesson, but they watching the clock. Miss Carol Lee. And see, what they do is they would tag team. Tim, they would tag team. So one would, the young one would come up on Monday, and the older one would come up on Tuesday. But the same scenario. Miss Carol Lee, can I have a snack? So they wouldn't grab their snack. And so then they start watching me to see whether I was getting the snack. So what I did was I just got the snack when they got the snack. Because the little one would see me go through the refrigerator and either get a cookie or ice cream bar. So, you know, she would just roll her eyes up in the head like, you know, it's not 12 o'clock. <laughs> so I felt like I had to get permission from her. So I just said, I eat when they eat. <laughs> can I go to the movies? You, you would ask. You have to ask your parents. Can, can I go to the movies? I remember this one movie. How, how many of y'all cried to get your own way? Y'all be honest with me when y'all children coming up. Thank you, Megan. This side over here, I like they never cry. But anyway, I talked to this side. So I, I wanted to see this movie because, you know, James Bond, it came out. You know, I was in about the fifth, sixth grade. And it's like, you know, I, I asked my mom. It, it was a movie called Man Called Decker. Anybody ever seen it? It, it, was, real, it was the worst movie I ever seen because I cried for that movie, man. I, you know, mom said, no, no, you know, maybe another time. So I cried. I put the face on. I figured if I cried long enough, she would let me go. And that's what she did. The popcorn was jacked up. The seat was jacked up. But, but I asked her, could it go? How many of y'all snuck out to go to the movie? Uh-oh, see, I, I don't get a lot of hands on them. Okay. Okay, a liar. That's her. Daughter said she was a liar. She lied about the movie. Can I go to Billy's house? No, no. Can I go to Sally's house? No, she going to the movie. Can, can, I, can I spend the night? How many of y'all spent the night? Did y'all go where y'all supposed to go? Okay, see, this side got real. Lord, I see you back there. Can I spend the night? <laughs> Y'all want to hear about my history. Thank God. Can, can I use the bathroom? May I use the bathroom? You're in, in class. In, in, who, who had that teacher? Can you use the bathroom? I see. Okay. All right. One teacher let me wet my pants. Yes, sir. It was jacked up. Because, see, you have to have permission. And the teacher said, once you finish your math problem, you can go. <laughs> you know? So I wet myself because she wouldn't let me go to the bathroom until I finished the math problem. But see how I was willing to listen to authority. I had to be able to forgive her, though. Once I started getting into counseling, I always asked Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, who I need to forgive? He showed me her. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying. So we were trained to wait for authority to ask for permission. But what I want to bring to you guys in the next couple of weeks is some of those permissions are still in place because we didn't give ourselves permission to go past them. Some of us are still answering to our parents. And to be honest with you, some of our parents have already gone to glory. So they're not going to come back and give us permission. Some of us are still under the authority, the, the permission of who we used to be married to. I'm just being real with y'all. That thing, I mean, you, you're, talking about, you're talking about freedom if you're willing to listen and willing to learn. Some of us still dealing with the past job we had and the permission that they gave us, and now we're on a new job. Some of us still living in a better house but still thinking in a poor manner because we never gave ourselves permission to live in a good house to drive the good car, 
this ain't real, buddy. So write this down. Write this down right here. Our self-worth can be attached to our ability to receive permission. Let's say, for example, you ask five things and you only get one. One of the five. You ask them the same day. So your, your self-worth just said, how come I only got one of the five things? I must not be good enough. So now you're going to live your life based off the fact that you couldn't get nothing but one of those five things. But you're the one that have to give yourself permission to do what? To receive. You got to give yourself permission to say out of your mouth, that was one out of five, but that's not my worth. My worth was created by him, and that's what I'm going by. I'm not going by whether my mom said no to five things. My teacher said no to five things. My husband, my wife said no to five things. I'm going by the fact that my, I'm priceless and I give myself permission to operate in that. Y'all grab that thing. Our self-worth can be attached to our ability to receive permission. Now, there are people here that got, you know, multiple children. I mean, come from a multiple family household. That's, that's me. That's some other folk. Now, if, if Sally got three ounces that day and you only got two, what do you think about Sally? Mom likes Sally better than me. So did you take that into your new relationships? Did you take that into your new expectations? So you expect to be rejected because mom knew best at that time? You got to give yourself permission to thrive, to rest. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. We'll, we'll, we'll pick up next Sunday. That's what we're going to do. Because I give myself permission. I can stop right here. It's a half an hour. <laughs> Glory to God. Because, see, I, I had to give myself permission because I was thinking the more I talk, the more you learn. But how many of y'all know that y'all gave yourself permission to stop in a half an hour? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When I started reading the faces, I saw click, click. Y'all know what I mean? You know, like, <laughs> you looking at me, but you ain't hearing me. <laughs> so why should I keep talking if you're not listening? I mean, you're here, but you're not listening. So I say, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give myself permission to stop in a half now. That thing feel good. See, maybe I only have to sleep for two hours a day instead of three. <laughs> so I'd like to have every head bowed and every eye closed. So, Father, we worship you. We thank you. We just thank you that you are God and there is no equal. Everything that we could ever need is already placed upon us. But we have to give ourselves permission to receive and to use what you have given us. So we thank you in advance for it. We thank you that as I'm about to finish this part of the teaching, that people's minds are still active because you have touched their heart. Because they gave you permission to take a look at their heart. So those in the audience, repeat after me. In agreement with the fact of those who said that I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So repeat after me. So Father, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10, you said that I, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. I call on your name now, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. I receive you now. I now make you the Lord of my life. Therefore, according to your word, I am now saved. I'm born again. I have eternal life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me the Son, the S-O-N. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Just go to chosenrva.com and go to the uh, new members page, and that gives you the information that you need to understand what just took place. Amen. 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 This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you, with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul 
for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com or call at 866-333-9505.